We'll attach a galvanometer to the generator with copper wire, making a circuit. No current flows as yet, because the coil is not cutting across the field. Turning the armature moves the coil across the field, and a small amount of current flows. One way in which to generate a stronger voltage is to provide a stronger magnetic field. Bill likes to fix things, especially electrical equipment. When he had fixed the vibrator of his jigsaw, all that was needed was electricity to make it operate. The electric outlet in the wall supplied electricity, and the sound of the saw assured Bill that he had done a good repair job. But Bill's saw works only if connected to a source of electricity. Where does this electricity come from? Electricity comes into most homes by means of power lines. Power lines are not the source of electricity, but only conduct or carry it. These lines originate at a power station. Inside the station is the generator, which produces an electric current. Before seeing how a generator causes an electric current to flow, let's review the circuit. In its simplest form, we can think of a circuit as a closed loop of conducting material, such as this copper wire. We'll use two other items in our circuit. One is a galvanometer, an instrument that shows when current is flowing through the circuit. The other is a battery. It will furnish an electrical pressure measured in units called volts. As we complete the circuit, the needle of the galvanometer moves, indicating that a current of electricity is flowing through the circuit. The current is a movement of electrically charged particles called electrons. If at any point the circuit is broken, the current does not flow. But when the circuit is closed, current again flows. So a current will flow only through a closed circuit. In this circuit, an electric current is flowing through one conductor in the cord to the saw and back along the other conductor of the cord to the power station. In this simplified diagram, we can see the entire circuit between Bill's home and the power station. And in the power station, as we saw, are the generators, which generate the electrical pressure or voltage which we need for a current. A generator produces electricity by means of magnetism. An unusual experiment with magnetism was described by Michael Faraday, the English scientist, in 1832. Faraday had attached a current detector to the ends of a coil of copper wire in a circuit. Faraday placed a bar magnet inside the coil. The indicator moved as Faraday moved the coil near the magnet. A current was flowing in the circuit. The more rapidly the coil was moved, the more current flowed. Faraday knew, as we do today, of the field of force of any magnet the area surrounding a magnet within which certain objects were attracted to it. By observing iron filings, Faraday had seen how the lines of force formed a pattern in the magnetic field. Faraday observed that when the conductor, the coil of wire, cut across the invisible lines of force of a magnetic field, a voltage was produced, a voltage which caused a current to flow through the wire circuit. Faraday's discovery that magnetism can be used to generate an electrical voltage forms the principle of the generator. This is a model of one type of generator. Two bar magnets provide a magnetic field. The coil of copper wire wound around a metal shaft is the armature. The armature is made to rotate in order to cut across the field. This produces voltage just as if the coil were moved up and down across the field. We'll attach a galvanometer to the generator with copper wire, making a circuit. 
No current flows as yet because the coil is not cutting across the field. Turning the armature moves the coil across the field and a small amount of current flows. One way in which to generate a stronger voltage is to provide a stronger magnetic field. To do this, we'll replace the bar magnets with an electromagnet. Current from this battery, flowing through wire wound around an iron core, makes this an electromagnet. It will provide a stronger magnetic field for the generator. Now when the coil cuts across the field, a stronger current flows. Also notice that as the armature spins, the indicator swings to left and right of zero, showing that the current flows first in one direction, then in the opposite direction. This change of direction results from the way the armature is connected to the circuit. Voltage generated in the armature produces a current. The current passes to a pair of round metal rings called slip rings. Current passes from the slip rings to a pair of thin metal strips called brushes. From the brushes, current passes through the wire and back to the armature in a closed circuit. Whether we use an electromagnet or bar magnets, we remember that the armature of the model generator is a coil of wire which is moved across the magnetic field between two magnetic poles. We can think of any armature as a single loop which moves across the magnetic field between two magnetic poles. Each end of the loop is attached to a slip ring. Two brushes are in contact with the rings. Two lengths of wire and a galvanometer complete the circuit. We'll follow one rotation of the loop. Arrows near the brushes will show the direction of current flow. As the loop cuts across the field, a voltage is generated and current flows. At this point, the loop does not move across the field. The indicator of the galvanometer shows that no current flows and therefore that no voltage is being generated. As the loop continues to rotate, it starts to move across the field again and current flows once more, but in the opposite direction. When the loop again moves out of the field, no voltage is generated, so no current flows. Follow the reversal of current once more as the loop moves across the field. We call this continuous reversal of current an alternating current, or simply AC. We've been generating an alternating current with the model generator. By replacing the bar magnets with an electromagnet to produce a more powerful magnetic field, we can generate an alternating current of enough voltage to light a small bulb. A different kind of current can be generated by changing the way in which the armature is connected to the circuit. To do this, we'll replace the two slip rings with a single split ring called a commutator. From the commutator, current passes to both brushes in such a way that current flows through the circuit in one direction only. This is called direct current, or DC. Whether we are generating AC or DC, we have to rotate the armature of the model generator by hand or mechanically. A gasoline engine supplies the mechanical power to turn the armature of this generator. Often the armatures of large generators are rotated by the energy of flowing water. This simple diagram shows how water is heated, producing steam. The steam turns the fan or rotor of a steam turbine. This in turn rotates the armature of a generator, producing electricity. If we could see inside a real turbine generator in operation, we'd see the huge rotor revolving as steam is forced through the turbine. One of the newest ways of providing energy to spin the turbine is shown in this model atomic power plant. 
Instead of using an ordinary fuel, radioactive rods are used to heat water, producing steam. The steam drives a steam turbine, rotating the armature of the generator. As modern as it is, this generator depends upon the simple principle that a conductor cutting across a magnetic field will produce an electric current. Thus, from a simple relationship between electricity and magnetism, have come the powerful generators of today, producing electric current on a vast scale to supply us with light, heat, and power.